I feel like her character going to do a number on him or he trying to play her and she going to have the last laugh. Hello and welcome or welcome back to Actually Let's Talk About It with me, your host, Lili. And today I will be reacting to The Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes official trailer. And this is going to be interesting. The, the reason why I wanted to like react to this trailer specifically is because I saw the discourse going on on Twitter and TikTok regarding this trailer. And you can very much distinguish the people who have read books by Suzanne Collins and people who have just seen the movies by Suzanne Collins in that discourse. And I was like, I'm a person who has read the books and I'm like, yeah, y'all are, you're not getting what this is really about here, but yes. So we're gonna react to that trailer. But before we go into the reaction and my little intro before the reaction, I just wanna give a good Patreon shout out to a new patron to my Patreon by the name of Keisha L. And I wanna thank you so much for, you know, becoming a patron and, you know, supporting yes good sis and supporting the channel as well and i want to thank you so much for being a patron and you know just wanted to give you a quick shout out there and then now what we're going to go into is we are going into this like kind of intro to the reaction so for those of you who don't know the hunger games trilogy it was very big deal when it came out when the movies came out when the books came out as well because i read the books when i was in high school read them backwards by accident. So I read the Mockingjay book first, and then I read the Hunger Games, then Catching Fire, then had to read Mockingjay again for it to all really make sense. It did make enough sense at Mockingjay, but I didn't really get the full grasp of the story until I read them in chronological order, the way I should have. I didn't realize that when I got Mockingjay that it was actually a part of a trilogy until I researched it a bit more and I was like, okay, I need to get the Hunger Games, I need to get Catching Fire, then I need to read Mockingjay again so I can get the big picture and it was a really good book and a really good set of books it was a really good trilogy i loved it and then i do know that this ballad of songbirds and snakes it was released back in 2020 so around the time covid 19 happened and it was a digital release because you know covid and you couldn't really have physical things with at that particular time with the launch and i do know that it is set 64 years before the events of the hunger games even happened Point number one. So this is a prequel to the world before we get to the Katniss Everdeen and the Peter Malarks. Okay, this is before them. It predates them. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to do. And I think that people forget the whole point of the Hunger Games. They're like, oh, it's so unrealistic. Literally, it's political. Like, you think that certain things can be this unrealistic, but I'm like, in the state of politics, even that we're seeing in the states, Pan Am isn't far-fetched. It's not something that could be like considered dystopian sci-fi. It could very much become reality because this is what happens when you allow propaganda and fear-mongering to win. You get the society that the Hunger Games represents. You could also get the society that the Squid Game represented as well these aren't far off possibilities it's just if some pe if a large enough group of people choose to allow this to be their reality and just like get into it it can very much happen and i think people are forgetting the the politicalness and the especially in the horror games how purposely it was done that every theatrical release you got a propaganda poster of the tributes and the idea of the tributes and the idea of dividing them into districts you know, and now we're getting a prequel to what life was like possibly before that even happened and how it got there. Okay, like this is showing the effects of allowing bad people in leadership. Like that in and of itself. And for people that haven't read the books, they're like, oh, that's what, yeah, that's what it do. That's really what it do. That was what it was. Anyway, we're going to get straight into the the reaction here because i'm excited to see what what are going to do because i think we're going to see a young president snow aka a younger version of donald sutherland's character and i'm like i want to see if he was as crazy when he was young 
as he was as he got older. That's what I'm going to see. Come on, illustration. I miss this. I miss this so. I am honored to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves. Viola Davis? Viola Davis? And Peter Dinklage. What? I'm about to say, yeah, hmm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just sold off of these two alone. I love me some Peter Dinklage. I ain't never seen a Peter Dinklage movie I don't like. <sighs> okay, they got me. They got me right here and it's only 19 seconds. They have me. Okay, and then Viola Davis. Uh, the queen, uh, mother herself. You know what? She could do no wrong, okay? I, I love this woman. I love this woman down. Okay, but yes, these two already, they're selling me. They they have they have me. Okay, I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a ticket to this. For sure. Wait, he started the Oh no, sir. I've summoned you all here for the tenth annual reaping ceremony, in which we choose two children from each district to fight to the death in the Hunger Games. From District what? 12, Lucy Gray Bear. There has been a change this year. As a mentor, Mr. Snow, your role is to turn these children into spectacles, not survivors. What does my mentor do besides bring me roses? I do my best to take care of you. You really want to take care of me in that arena? Start by thinking I can actually win. Mm. I'm Lucky Flickerman. First ever post of the Hunger Games. Enjoy the show. What? Okay, so the other dude was a nepotism kid because his he comes from a long line of people who have hosted the Oh my gosh. Wow, this is there she is tying it together. Okay, I see you, Mrs. Collins. I see you. in there filled with the terror of becoming prey see how quickly we become predator see how quickly civilization disappears there's a natural goodness built into us all we can step across that line into evil or not To enter the games, they want you to text the number to enter the game. No. Okay, like, and then I noticed the little curtsy she did it was the same curtsy that Katniss did when she said, Thank you for your consideration. The parallels between Katniss and Lucy right now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then also the quote from President Snow, aka Donald Sutherland himself, a lot of man. Um, I'm like I'm hoping for a cameo from him in here. Anyway, I'm such a I like that man a lot. And I love his son, Kiefer Sutherland for 24. Grew up on that show, y'all. Don't even get me in started into that either. Cause I didn't even know they was related. I'm like, okay, I see it. I see it. You got it from your dad. But you got talent, okay? That's talent right there. It runs in the family. Let's go. But yeah, so, but outside of that, this trailer here, the fact that President Snow was seemingly 
seemingly, and I do mean seemingly because this could technically be like, even though it's a trailer, it could still be kind of like propaganda for President Snow. So until I see the movie, I'm not going to say that he a, was a good person. He seemingly seems like a good person. But at the end of the day, you're a mentor for the 10th annual Hunger Games. So that means it had been going on 10 years. So technically, the Hunger Games is 74 years old. If this is taking place 64 years before the events of Katniss and Peeta's Hunger Games. And all the craziness they went through in the trilogy. Then technically, so this is, technically it began 74 years ago, if we're going by that logic. And that's pretty crazy. So it could have easily been ended after this Hunger Games if people in power wanted it to end. But it seems like they thrive off of seeing people battle to the death and them not having to go through it and knowing that their family doesn't have to go through it. And that's like the weirdest, the weirdest, strangest part about it. And then just seeing that President Snow, I don't know if the actor was wearing a wig because he had a buzz cut for the other portion of the scene. So I'm not sure because it was looking a little stiff. So I'm not sure if that's a wig or a lace front either way. They kind of, like, it was still kind of given, but I could tell it wasn't his hair. Anyway, but that's beside the point. But, you know, the costume department is still going in because it's giving 64 years ago fashion. Okay, that's cute. I love to see um, Mrs. Snow White. Okay, because homegirl plays Snow White in a little live action, in case you didn't know that. So she getting her checks. She collected her money. Power, more power to her on that one. And you know, she's um Latina representation because she um I believe she's half. So come on now with the talent. And she's looking pretty fierce up in here. I'm thinking she gonna do something to Snow. I feel like her character gonna do a number on him. Or he trying to play her. And she gonna have the last laugh. Either way, she winning this game. Whether it be the actual home games or the game that he might be trying to run on her because I don't trust President Snow. Like, I think that, I want to think that this man has some redeemable qualities when he was younger, but I do not trust this man. I do not trust this man. Seeing how, how conniving he was from Harper Games 1, 2, and 3, not just the movie version of him, but the book version of him, he's dang near psychotic. So I don't think that just came out of nowhere. I think he was always that way. And even though this trailer is kind of like making you think, oh, we're going to see how Snow became evil. I think we're going to see how evil he's always been. That's all I'm going to say. Like, that's what I'm thinking here. Because I'm not, I'm not for one second going to doubt the, the evilness and the vileness of this man's character. Because he's shown it from her games one, two, and three. I'm not going to think that the younger version of him is going to have redeemable qualities. I'm not going into this movie thinking he's going to be redeemable. I know that he's a mentor. And just like Peter Dinklage's character said, you're here to make spectacles of them, not to mentor them to win this game. So we got to keep that in mind. We got to keep that in mind. And just because he was in love with her doesn't mean she was in love with him. I'm like, because she was a mentor. You were basically like her Hamage. Candace wasn't in love with Hamage. She was in love with Peter. You know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like you fell in love with your mentee as the mentor. And it was not vice versa. Okay? It was not reciprocated. So, there's that as well. So, I'm not sure. Because we're probably just seeing this in the eyes of how President Snow remembers it. Possibly. Because I haven't read the book. So, I don't know if it's in third person or if it's in first person. And we're seeing this through the eyes of President Snow because that's a warped viewpoint anyway. It's definitely one-sided. It's only telling one side of the story. So I'm gonna wait to see how this gonna play out in the movie theater, okay? Because they got me a little a little intrigued here, okay? Got my faves in it. And then you got, I think that was Stanley Tucci. I'm not sure what I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And I'm just excited to see the fresh faces and to see how their stories are going to be told, really, because this is, this is going to go any kind of way. But I'm excited to see what's in store for them. But yeah, that's my reaction to The Hunger Games about the song vs. Snakes, the official trailer. I am definitely going to have to read this book because after, like, after I read the book, I can like do a reaction on the book review because I feel like there's, there's some things missing 
as there should be in a trailer. It should not tell you the whole plot. And I want to read the book to figure out what is going to really go on plot wise in this, in the story, just to see what exactly we're dealing with here. Cause I don't think I can wait until November. That's too long. That's like freaking six months away. Ah, can't wait no 108 days to figure out what's going to happen. I got to read the book and get this out the way. I can read it in like one or two days. Actually, technically one if I just sit on it all day and just read. Sit down and read it. Not sit on it. Sit down and read it because I'm a reader. I like to have a physical book in my hand and read through it, okay? Or an ebook, but I prefer a physical book when I really want to get into something. Just flipping the page. It's really therapeutic for me. I love that. But yeah, that's just me. But let me know what y'all thought about this trailer. I really liked it. It gave me questions. It's giving me conspiracy theories. And I'm going on tangents regarding this trailer. And yeah, yeah, I'm like looking at the video, like counter how long that I've been on this. I'm like, y'all, this is, this trailer is really out here giving me theories and conspiracy theories. Like, I'm like, is this propaganda for President Snow? I don't know. I'm like, okay, maybe it is. Maybe the whole movie is. I don't know. Anyway, but <laughs> we're going to figure out at the theaters. But, and, or once I read the book, whichever one comes first. I'm pretty sure I'm going to read the book first, though. But yeah, that's pretty much my reaction to this trailer. And if y'all stayed until the end and all my ramblings and whatnot, thank you so much for staying until the end. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do not forget to give it a good thumbs up because apparently that it does something with the algorithm, technical, logical things, and it makes it viewable for more people somehow. So yeah, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you also want to subscribe after you give it a thumbs up, don't forget to do that because this channel is on the road to a thousand subscribers and we're trying to get there relatively soon. Why? You know why. Anyway, and outside of that, also, if you are watching this on Patreon, again, thank you so much for being a patron. It is really appreciated. And I will try to get more videos out to you on Patreon and on YouTube relatively soon. I'm going to try to upload on YouTube specifically um, on Sundays and Tuesdays and Fridays. However, sometimes my work schedule doesn't allow me to do that. So it will at least be on Sundays and Fridays for sure. Tuesdays is the, it's iffy. I'm, I'm trying to work on that. But on Patreon, I upload just as soon as I'm done filming and downloading and editing. So it'll be more frequent with the Patreon uploads and you'll see them first on Patreon, of course. But yes, and if you want to see what's going on on Patreon and you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be down in the bio. But yes, until next time and until the next reaction, I will see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>